so we've managed um, the first steps in the OR and you've done you've done that you you can do a tunnel now you could do side porch management and now we're going down to the heavy stuff we do the complete capsular access with the sister tom uh, via the superior paracentesis and uh, yeah this is like I think I started doing capsular rexis after two or three weeks in the in the OR, and uh, this is really my uh, my first cases. You see, it's really fast forward. You see my finger there. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what I'm trying to do there. It's running out a bit. The eye is moving towards the ah. That, oh, <laughs> yes. What am I doing there? Man? No. So what you're seeing there really well is that you um, you're losing the center picture. Well, look at that. But you're still um, kind of in focus, right? So that, that was your first capsular rexis. Obviously, it wasn't the best one, but um, I mean, in the end, it works. The, the capsular rexis is, is the ultimate nemesis of every cataract surgeon. And there is no one that is not challenged by a capsular rexis. Even if you have performed 20,000 of them, the capsular rexis will always be a challenge. If, if you do it with a cystitome or if you do it with a forceps, um, I don't think that it really matters. We do it um, with a cystitome um, mostly because um, we have an, a temporal tunnel incision mm -hmm. and this gives you the opportunity to perform the capsular rexis on the right eye and on the left eye with your dominant hand. Um, and I personally teach it and do it because I learned it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with the forceps. I think you have more control, maybe like this, but uh, it takes much uh, much longer than uh, with the forceps. I mean, even if you if you do it quick, it still takes a little bit longer. But I mean, that these couple of seconds shouldn't be uh, yeah. very decisive in the in the surgery. But what you see there in the video as well is um, this is probably quadruple speed, right? Well, even more. <laughs> yeah. It takes time. And I mean, the capsular rexis is the signature of the surgeon. Um, it's, it's like sending a postcard. If, if you have a really messed up capsular rexis, everyone will notice that. <laughs> if you yeah. have complications in cataract surgery, everyone will notice that. So um, the capsular rexis is important. And once you, once you have a bad capsular rexis, um, your surgery is probably going downhill very quick. Um, so it's, it's very important to just... Do it properly and, um, you know, just, just yeah. do the times. Try not to do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's brilliant. But what you see there also is you have the left, left hand inside the eye to support the eye. And I always make it a point to have two, um, two hands and two instruments inside the eye. Um, one is to stabilize the eye. But sometimes in complicated cases, you will need your left hand. And it's once you reach a complicated case, and you need your left hand to support you uh, in any kind of maneuver, it's always good to have um, tried oh, that a hundred times. That. I cannot look at that, man. <laughs> it's really... Oh. Now, there you are out of focus again, right? Yeah, and and you, see, the, you see the, the decimal folds, yeah, right? No, this, the second instrument is just... I'm, what am I doing there? I mean, it's... I think once you've focused on, on, on the capsular axis, you don't really notice what's going no, on with the look, second instrument, so, right? This is even so... Um, dangerous that the, the the second instrument moves around so much look now i'm pushing the paracentesis and trying to enter the eye it's really 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 hard what you do well in this situation is that you you see that you are not pushing down on the capsular axis i think well you're moving the eye around quite a lot um but you're, you're not pushing down on the capsular axis so, so so that is very good what you see that during during every capsular axis um you're still in the part where your visual system is adapting to the depth perception. Then you have to, to be monofocal on the point of the, um, of the capsular rexis where, where it really runs and where, you, where you're drawing your lines with the capsular rexis. And at the same time, you have to learn that you need to focus on the peripheral view as well um, with your second instrument. Now, I don't know if that's the best thing to teach, having a second instrument right from the get-go. Um, I, I make it mandatory because I think it's so important to um, to have the left hand um, included already and to use it 
um, as a support. And if, if you need it later on, I think there are situations where you are thankful that you have a left yeah. hand. But and, uh, what do you think about the, the high frequency uh, capsulotomy uh, with, the, with the Earthly machine? Well, there is um, high frequency capsulotomy is, is a good thing. Um, I think um, I, I like it, especially, I haven't tried that personally, but I like it for um, a very, very dense cataract and wide cataracts. I think that's, uh, that's a very good thing because it, it coagulates and stabilizes the rim of your axis as well. Um, that is a good thing. I would not recommend doing a femtolaser re assisted rexus in any um, very wide cataracts um, because it's basically a can opener. But if you do a high frequency capsulotomy um, with that, um, this is, is not a can opener and it's a very smooth edge that you're creating and it will help you to stabilize the rim, if, especially if you put it under pressure. Um, you probably will not see an Argentinian flag. What's your, um, what do you guys think? Who, who's doing the forceps? Who's tried both cystitome and forceps? Um, what do you guys think? What's, what's your preferred method? Yeah. What's your favorite size of the Rexus? Do you do a 4.8, 5.2, 5.5, 6.0?